Hello. Project risk management is our topic in this lecture video. In this lecture, we are going to talk about rather systematic and e explicit uh, ways of doing uh, project risk management, which normally rely on specific methods and also uh, the implicit assumption is uh, that project risk management is a separate activity and separate activity area uh, in the management of a project. Okay, let's start uh, about uh, with talking about uh, challenges with project risk management in firms. One challenge or problem is that risk identification and analysis is conducted only once properly. Actually, risk management should be a continuous process where you repeat the identification and analysis where needed and also throughout the project life cycle if possible. Well, uh, the second bullet. Risk management activities are done only because company rules say so. So if there is the feeling that uh, risk management doesn't actually benefit uh, so uh, extensively the project management, so then uh, projects do it because the company rules say so, that uh, risks must be, for example, identified or they must estimate or response plans must be done. Then. Applications of uh, the generic risk management process can be really exhaustive. So if you really do it in a very systematic way, so it might be that it becomes too heavy process to conduct. Also, risk checklists may kill creativity. So if you have a readily prepared risk checklist, it can be that you don't even any more think about what are the real risks in this project, but you just are going through the checklist and ticking there uh, whatever uh, looks like uh, feasible. Then the content of risk uh, checklist might be a problem if uh, there are two short labels like supplier problems, whose project wouldn't have supplier projects. So, but is it right that every project ticks that kind of a risk as their risk without explaining what uh, is the problem with suppliers. But on the other hand, if there are really uh, extensive stories about what has happened in some previous projects and so on, so it even might be that that can be uh, uh, something that uh, doesn't bring and catalyze uh, the creativity in your uh, project. Sometimes we can also see that uh, IT systems or tools are not too helpful uh, and uh, it even can uh, kill uh, the uh, interaction between individuals to be creative and understand uh, what's there in the future for us. That might be risks or opportunities. So if we start uh, recording these things to IT systems it might be that we communicate through IT systems and uh, the actual idea of what is the risk and what should be done for the risk uh, might be lost. Then many times facilitators are needed. So if uh, a project team collects to a meeting room uh, to identify risks and think about what there is ahead of us, it's good that there is a facilitator who kind of uh, helps the people to uh, use their uh, creativity and heuristics, uh, bring up heuristics that uh, would uh, uh, give some uh, ideas about what the risks are and then other people uh, participating to that meeting could also add to that and uh, then the rich description of a risk and what should be done for that follows. But if there is not a facilitator, it might be kind of a rather uh, short engineer's task or just listing some factual things and uh, thinking that here are our risks. But uh, the risks are not about engineering or 
uh, a question of whether we have calculated uh, the um, project's uh, uh, different uh, en engineering aspects uh, based on initial data right or not, but it is more about questioning of, uh, of assumptions and uh, thinking about what might be different in this project. Well, it also can be that uh, risk management gets isolated from the project management and uh, it becomes the responsibility of the project manager or risk analyst. So it is not good if the risk analysis is done only by the project manager or some one person. It uh, is good if uh, the risks and understanding of the risk are shared among those people who really are uh, implementing the project. And then when it comes to learning, uh, many times uh, the risks are recorded and uh, the lessons learned are recorded only after the project has been completed. But who remembers anymore what were the risks? Of course we remember what happened, but if there were situations that were close uh, to happen and, and, and something, and uh, if we identified certain risks that didn't happen, so who then in the end remembers them and uh, carries them um, to the next project. So it is better somehow to update and uh, in a continuous manner to discuss about the risks when the project is ongoing and probably someone will take also this uh, discussion to uh, uh, sister projects uh, ongoing at the same time and give some information back and so on. Okay, uh, risk management process is very simple. Identify, analyze, plan responses and implement responses. But before the phase one identify, there must be some kind of a phase 0a where you define risk strategy. What kinds of risks are we focusing on? What is our objective? So if you, for example, look uh, the book chapter by Hilson uh, about uh, the risk management process and uh, especially the first step, risk process initiation. There he explains how uh, we must define the kind of a thresholds and understand what is a risk for us and what is not. And when we know what kind of animals that is risks we are chasing, then we must tailor our risk management process in a way that it catches or hunts these kinds of animals. Well, uh, the Hilsons book chapter also um, introduces the concept of risk breakdown structure, where you even initially list the risks that there are in the project, what areas, what kinds, so, so that we are aware of why the risk management process is implemented. And when it is implemented, I have described in this picture uh, the phase 0b. There must be the management of the risk management process. So we must carefully think about what is appropriate approach and what are appropriate methods in relation to our risk strat strategy, in relation to what we try to achieve. Mm -hmm. Now, let's put the risk management process to go uh, vertically across the project process or project life cycle. Let's see in this picture how it happens. So when there is now this project life cycle, then we must have this risk management process management in place. And in there we identify, we analyze, we plan responses at certain point of time and then these responses that are planned there uh, are scheduled to happen and certain responsibilities are also given to people uh, at some point of time in the project life cycle. Then we do again the risk management process and new responses might appear or some responses might uh, be found obsolete. And then again risk management process again again and so on, so that uh, we do uh, the risk management throughout the project 
life cycle where it is needed. So it is a kind of a continuous uh, activity there. This table illustrates a kind of a tool that many companies even use. And uh, this tool uh, first uh, in the first column uh, uh, introduces the risks that are identified. Then there is a second column, column where you evaluate the impact uh, uh, and probability. Then um, in the third column you uh, plan uh, the response, uh, give the response. Then you in the fourth column uh, you give it to a responsible person. Someone has really to do something for it and take it as a part of the overall project management. And then some, some kind of a um, uh, activity in the fifth column uh, about uh, um, timing the response. Sorry that I skipped uh, to the next uh, slide already, but uh, uh, here is the table that I was talking about. Sorry about uh, me being so trigger happy here. Okay, but now I'm triggering the next slide. And here comes uh, the uh, definition of risk. Uh, the risk is an event with a certain probability of realization. And the probability is not zero or 100, otherwise it is not a risk. That may affect the project schedule, cost or scope. And please recognize that this definition doesn't uh, define whether risk is favorable or unfavorable. So we also are looking at opportunities, the favorable side of uh, risks. Um, to uh, take advantage of the opportunities and not only hedging against uh, the unfavorable. Then subjective estimates. As projects are unique, there is no uh, frequencies available so that we could do any statistical calculations, but we must use the best expertise of the people who have been with in planning the project and who are executing the project and estimate the risks based on uh, their beliefs. I mean based on their expertise. When I say belief, so it, I, and when we say the, that it is subjective, we don't mean that it is skewed. Uh, rather, we mean that it is the best possible source of information to use people and their understanding. Okay, then the concept of uncertainty. Interesting question of uh, knowledge, how much we know and uh, how much we don't know. And in many times when we do risk estimates, it might be that uh, we are not only estimating what might happen in the future, but we are also estimating uh, the level of uh, our ignorance or the level of what we don't know. And that causes variation in our estimates. But that is also a little bit problematic thing because um, people are not so good of estimating what they don't know and providing it as a risk estimate. Okay, then pay attention to assumptions. In projects we always do assumptions about something and they are rather fundamental and important things that we assume before we start the project. It might be that the biggest risks are in the assumptions. So please question the assumptions and even put those assumptions in the risk list and start evaluating what if the assumptions don't hold. So uh, and uh, consider that they might be the biggest risks in the project. Well, then this kind of a busy slide about subjective estimates and biases just wants to underline the fact that people are not very good estimators. And uh, typical biases are listed in the lower part of this picture. And you must be aware of them. And if you use a facilitator that helps other people collecting in the same room, to identify and estimate risks and what should be done for them. So the facilitators especially could help people to uh, um, uh, o 
overcome these uh, potential biases. One bias is overconfidence. Then there might be a lot of optimism, groupthink, false consensus, false uh, scenarios, anchoring, anchoring your estimate or anchoring your scenario to certain uh, uh, easily understandable uh, value or explanation, representatives, uh, re representativeness, uh, which uh, means that you compare this project to another project uh, where actually the analogy doesn't apply and you think that when these things didn't happen in that previous project they don't happen here in this project or the risks are the same. And then availability means that uh, it might be that in your mind you have uh, avail you are uh, you have available some uh, very strong uh, uh, memories about certain projects and they start even overcoming other scenarios and uh, because they just are available and nothing else uh, I think uh, that that causes that your uh, risk estimate might get skewed. So be aware of these. One tool that companies very much uh, use is the probability impact or probability effect uh, matrix where uh, in this vertical axis there is a probability uh, categorized at three levels, low, medium, high, and then there is the effect or impact uh, in the uh, horizontal axis, and then you just uh, write risks there, uh, risk descriptions, and you try to plan some responses that uh, make the risks to move from the right top corner uh, to a kind of a more, more toler tolerable, uh, tolerable cells in this matrix. Of course, one problem here is that when you start filling in this kind of a matrix, uh, you are mostly thinking about unfavorable risks. And uh, it's rather important to understand that uh, also favorable risks, that is opportunities, uh, must be considered. And uh, it is often suggested that you do another matrix where you really start filling in uh, the favorable things in here. and what are those responses that uh, where you can take advantage of those uh, opportunities. This picture uh, shows two types of risks. At the top on green color, uh, marked with green color, pure risk, for example, fire on site, which many times has very low probability, but very high impact. For example, we might lose 1 million euros. The lower part of the picture describes business risks, which are more like continuous risks uh, where we can affect by project management. For example, estimating the cost of a certain item from 150 minimum to 600 maximum. And if we use that upper side uh, picture for estimating the un only the unfavorable side of a uh, certain activity costing 600 euros. So if there is a very low probability like 0 0.01 for uh, the event that makes uh, the impact of 600 euros, then my question would be, but what are the other activities or events uh, which have the probability of 0 0.99? But if this is a business risk, so please look at the lower picture and uh, how the minimum and the maximum includes all the possible events of all the possible values between 150 and 600. So that sums up to 1 or 100 percent and that only one risk estimate, the kind of a, a three-point estimate, uh, includes a range of favorable and unfavorable events if you consider that the minimum of 150 uh, 
cost is favorable and uh, and 600 is unfavorable. It of course all, also depends where you put your objective, cost objective. It can be that you put your cost objective somewhere in the middle and then you might consider uh, all events uh, bringing in lower than that middle value as favorable and all going uh, over it as uh, unfavorable. Okay. Clear with this? Hope so. Now, you have been introduced in the introduction to project management course. The area of uh, estimating three-point estimates or providing three-point estimates and how to use and apply them in uh, project risk management. If you don't remember the content of that, so please take a look at the video for introduction to project management about three-point estimates and their application in project risk management. And please brush up your uh, understanding about that. I think that it's important and uh, we, are, we need that when we are discussing uh, project risk management further. But just to remind you about uh, this with few pictures, is that uh, if we estimate uh, uh, risk or uh, in terms of cost variation uh, with three values, 150 minimum, 600 maximum, 250 most probable, then we can use these uh, equations at the top of this picture to calculate the expected value and the standard deviation of that risk. And when you have we have multiple risks, for example, here we have the basic estimate of doing some activity, what is the basic cost estimate of it. And then we have additional risks like weather conditions, attitude of customer, staff motivation. We can then add up these uh, uh, risks assumed to be uh, non-correlated and uh, using these equations and calculate the whole risk effect, effect for the whole project. And please uh, take a look, for example, of this table and recognize that what we estimate here are not physical cost items, but for example, weather conditions is an immaterial thing. It is a risk that affects the basic uh, estimate. And please recognize also that for weather conditions the minimum is minus 50, which means that it is favorable in terms of uh, uh, having a cost impact uh, that uh, affects that we can go lower than what was originally uh, included in the um, cost uh, basic cost estimate uh, in favorable weather conditions. Okay. To sum up, please recognize my message in one of the very early slides uh, about risk strategy. What kinds of risks we are focusing on? That kind of a determines what kind of risk management approach we need. So, yeah, risk management approach is, uh, approach is about how we do project risk management. So don't run blindly just to start applying identification of risks and uh, 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 analyzing them and then planning responses because there is a risk that you are lost, that you don't know why you do risk management and what kind of a risks you are chasing in your project. Well, thank you very much for being with me. Uh, let's continue discussing with you about the interesting issue of risk management and uh, how it should be organized properly in different kinds of projects. Okay, for now, bye.